Hello! Welcome to the Curly Bookworm. I'm Shivani and today we're going to do my March wrap up. So I want to talk to you today about the books that I read in March. I read five books in total. Strangely, I just realized while I was recapping everything that I read uh, for this video, two of the books that I've read are TV shows or are going to be TV shows. So if you don't read, then you can see the shows. Let's start off with the first book that I read this month. So the first one is Big Little Lies by Liana Moriarty. It is a book that has been adapted into a TV show for HBO. It's already out, I think. I haven't seen it yet. This book was given to me by my best friend who lives in Seattle. She sent me a Kindle gift. Thank you, Amu, for doing that. So I've read another book by the same author called The Husband's Secret. The cool thing about this author is that she has extremely great perspective. All her books sort of tend to talk from the minds of different people. And that's always a great thing to read. When this book starts, it's got Jane, Madeline and Celeste. Celeste and Madeline are best friends. Jane is the new girl in town and she meets Madeline and instantly hits it off with her and then she, the trio become friends. What they have in common is that all of their kids are just starting nursery school or kindergarten or whatever in this, uh, this local school that everybody sends their kids to and this school has its own politics going on. The good thing about this book is that it's a really funny, fast-paced sort of book. You have yourself chuckling. Uh, especially through Madeline's lens because she's one of those people who will continuously um, entertain you. And the three women are extremely different personalities, but it's interesting how they become this like triage of besties uh, over the course of this book. So it was a good book. It didn't blow my mind. It was great to read. I'm very much looking forward to finding the series and watching it. So I just went off recording to just check up uh, about the television show and I just discovered that while the book is set in a little seaside town in Australia, the show is actually set in California and America. Hmm. Same characters, I'm assuming same story, but just not in Australia. I think I gave it a 3.5 on 5 stars. The next book that I read was called Traitors Played by Sebastian de Castell. So this is a book uh, that is part of a series, it's a four part series. I was really excited to read this book because I've actually never found fantasy to be funny. I've always found fantasy to be very serious and very deep and very like introspective. This book was, um, for lack of a better word, a very boy book in that sense. So it was like super action packed. It was really funny. So like in the first three pages or chuckling. What I most enjoyed about the book therefore was really the humor in this book. Unfortunately, I didn't love the book itself so much. The story of this book is almost three musketeers like. It's like these three friends who are part of something called the Great Coats, who are these valiant brave kingsmen that go across of the country sort of uh, giving judgments on people's problems, solving their issues, saving them from evil and bad and all of that jazz. So they're like these very honorable Kingsmen wandering the country to help out citizens. This book is based on a time where the great courts have gone totally out of fashion. So the king died and then they basically found this favor because the people who started ruling were like these evil bunch of dukes. These guys are now roaming around the country trying to figure out how to restore the great courts. The plot in this book for me was not that great. There was far too much action for my liking, like actual action, not stuff that happened, but like actual action. There was a lot of description of the actual sword play and stuff like that, which was great in the beginning, but then I felt like a lot of that book became about the action scenes and less about the story itself. So while I really like this book, and I, like I said, I really, really appreciated the humor in this book, it could have been a really boring read without the humor. I give it a 3.5 on 5 stars simply because I was chuckling through all of the books. So while the story lacked, the characters were really fun and just the, the book itself was a really fun read for me. Will I continue to the next book this series? Probably not. The third book that I read this month is called Binti. It is the most fascinating novella that I've ever read in terms of the fantasy genre. This is just like a hundred page book that you breeze through really easily. Binti is based in the future but like in Africa. Uh, do I have your attention already? <laughs> so this book is essentially about this girl who's trying to leave her African tribe to go to another planet. There's this university on another planet that she wants to go to study at and things are different for Binti uh, because she comes from a tribe that has never wandered, they never travel. 
but they're great at science and maths and Binti is one of those girls who has great passion for knowledge for maths and she wants to do a bunch of things. I don't want to give a lot of this book away in a nutshell that's what it's about. It's a fascinating book because it's set in the future and the imagination on this book is insane. This book was a four on five for me if not more. The fourth book that I read this month is called Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Garnell. This is a fascinating book about mental illness. This is about a girl who has agoraphobia, which is essentially the phobia of going out, of being terrified of stepping out of your own house and outside of a comfort zone. The author herself has suffered through the same disease. And so the detail in this book is unbelievable. It is not necessarily a depressing book. It is not necessarily a tragic book. I love how this book has been written with so much detail and with so much real understanding of what the disease really feels like. Um, this complete paranoia, this complete fear of even stepping out. This book is based on this girl who has this disease and she happens to meet this boy next door. I know it sounds like a trope, I know it sounds like what, it just sounds like a story I've heard before. But I would pick it up simply for the way that this particular mental illness has been described because I've, I don't know a single person who has this kind of mental illness and to me it was a great insight into that world. This book for me was a definite 4 on 5 simply because it told a story that I haven't ever heard before. So the last book that I read this month was called 13 Reasons Why. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher is a book that is so fast-paced it will have you zipping. So this book has been made into a Netflix show which is releasing anytime now I think so check Netflix for that. So essentially this book is a suicide diary. I know, it sounds really dark, right? It is basically a set of 13 tapes that Hannah Baker, the protagonist of this book, leaves behind for the people who she believes are responsible for her ultimate suicide. Um, she is dead at the beginning of this book, so there's no going back from that. But she sends these 13 tapes out to 13 people who she feels are responsible for her suicide in one way or the other, whether it's small or big. So when the book opens, Clay receives a bunch of 13 tapes. He discovers that he's not the first person to receive these tapes. These tapes have been passed on from person to person, depending on who's on the list. And Clay starts listening to these tapes and he finds that he's just not able to put them down. And he has to finish these tapes and move them on to the next person on the list. In the beginning of this book, it kind of comes off as a bit frivolous, especially because it's the mind of a teenager. You know, you're already judging her because she's committed suicide and you're waiting for this big reason to come out. What happened to me while I was reading this book, while I thought in the beginning that it was a little bit frivolous, I felt like a little bit later the emotion really hit me. I was reminded of what it was like to be 16 or 17 or 18, basically in your teenagers, and be a little bit traumatized by how people are around you just traumatized by emotionally how heartbreaking what it is to be a teenager. Um, how life and the basics of life and adulting uh, seem really hard from time to time and that really basically hit me the most about this book. I don't know if this book has treated suicide as a concept really well, I'm not sure but a lot of feelings and emotions this book really hit me in the right spot and I really enjoyed reading this book. I have given it a 4 on 5 stars. I'm not sure I love too many of the characters in it but uh, the story itself really kept me going so the 4 or 5 is really for the power of the story really. So that's all that I read this month. Now that you know a little bit about the kind of reading that I do, if you feel like you want to suggest books to me, I'm more than happy. Please put it in the comments, tell me what you've read this month. And also do the sharing of this video and liking and all of that social stuff that you generally have to do when you like somebody's video. Be nice, show some love and also click on the bell button next to the subscribe button simply because then you'll know when I put up a video which means you'll be able to watch it. Which means I know you're watching it and I'm not talking to a camera randomly because that's just bizarre, right? Also comment for that same very reason. <laughs> that's all I have for you today. I will talk to you soon. Bye! I'm excited about today's video because we're doing another tag! Yay!